The movie starts in 55 AD in Capadia, where an elder named Saint Maius is publicly humiliated and then stoned by a crowd. When Maius is too weak to defend himself, one man picks up a larger rock and hits him on the head, killing him. Centuries later, in 129 AD, Christianity has taken over Europe and the Crusades are in progress to retake the city of Jerusalem. At the same time, the Normans loyal to King John of England are fighting to conquer Ireland. In a secluded monastery in Ireland, a sacred relic is hidden. The focus shifts to a young monk named Dermot and a mute man who was found stranded on a beach and cared for by Dermot. The silent man, known as the mute, has become Dermot's friend and the guardian of the monastery. One day, while on a hill not far from the monastery, they spot three horsemen approaching. Dermot races down the hill to inform the other monks of the knight's arrival. The knights are led by a French cleric named Frere Geraldus, who meets with the abbot and explains his mission as an envoy of Pope Innocent III in Rome. He seeks to transport the holy relic stored at the monastery to Rome, as it is believed to have the power to defeat non-believers. The abbot agrees to the request, recognizing the relic's significance. Some legends say the relic can release God's vengeance against enemies, promising success in the forthcoming crusades. Soon after several monks manage to retrieve a golden chest containing the holy relic from a nearby pit, the abbot sends five monks, including Dermot and the Mute, to join Geraldus on a sacred mission to transport the relic to Rome. Without delay, Dermot, the Mute, and the monks named Kieran, Cahal, and Rua prepare the holy relic and load it onto a cart. As they embark on their sacred journey to Rome, led by Geraldus, dark clouds gather over the vast grasslands. The horse-drawn cart carrying the holy relic suddenly becomes immovable, as if the relic itself is unbearably heavy. Dermot and the other monks attempt to push the cart when a lightning bolt suddenly strikes the golden chest containing the holy relic. Sparks fly, causing brief panic among the monks as they scramble to douse the flames. Once the fire is out, Kieran tries to touch the golden chest, only to scorch his hand on its hot surface. At the same time, rain begins to fall, forcing the group to press on in search of shelter. As night closes in, Geraldus and his group decide to rest and make a campfire. They then recount the story of the Vikings who were drawn to the holy relic's power and tried to steal it. Those Vikings had attacked the monastery at night, murdered the sleeping monks, and took the relic. Soon after, the remaining monks fled the church and witnessed an angel lifting the holy relic. At the same time, a fierce storm arose, pulling all the Viking ships out to sea. When the storm calmed, the monks found three Viking bodies, burned from touching the holy relic, which only those with pure hearts could handle. Hearing this tale, Kieran looked at the burn on his hand and wondered about the purity of his own heart since the relic had rejected him. The next morning, Deoroyd woke up and accidentally saw the mute doing something unfamiliar. Additionally, he noticed a large cross tattoo on the mute's back, covered with scars. As the sun rose higher, Geraldus led the monks to continue their sacred journey. They came across a small river, and feeling thirsty, Geraldus decided to drink from it. The monks quickly stopped him, believing the water was inhabited by fairy creatures that emerged at night from the river's cracks and that it contained harmful magical spells. However, Geraldus dismissed this as mere superstition, walked into the river, purified the water with a prayer, and then drank from it without hesitation. After Geraldes and his companions continued their extensive travel, they reach a forest where a group of Roman allied soldiers approaches them upon discovering Geraldi's mission to transport the sacred object. Led by King Baron de Merville's son, Raymond de Merville, the soldiers guide Geraldi's party to meet his father, King Baron de Merville. On their way to the king's camp, they come across a fox's body impaled on a tree with the UA Mora tribe symbol. This tribe once worshipped God but later turned to idol worship after their prayers for victory remained unanswered. At the same time, they notice thieves stealing fish across the river, prompting Raymond's men to shoot arrows at them. After apprehending one thief within the kingdom's territory, Raymond's soldiers sever the thief's hand. During this period, Raymond and his troops recognize a mute individual who appears familiar from the Crusades. They then continue their journey until reaching the camp, where they meet Baron, known for his faithfulness and dedication to God. When meeting Geraldes, Baron mentions that if he were younger and stronger, he would join them on the pilgrimage to Rome. Intrigued by the sacred object, Baron asks Geraldes to unlock the golden chest and reveal it. Geraldes agrees, and upon opening the chest, they uncover that the sacred relic is actually the stone used by a person to slay others thousands of years ago. The following day, Geraldes and his party resume their journey under the protection of Raymond's soldiers. 
When they arrive at the riverbank, they discover that the bridge they had planned to cross has been burned down by the UA Morta tribe. In response, Raymond and some of his men set out to find those responsible for destroying the bridge, while Giraldes continues onward with the remaining escort. As they venture through the forest, which is UA Morta territory, they are suddenly attacked by the tribe members. One by one, Raymond's guards are taken down by arrows and enemy swords. Amidst the chaos, the mute picks up a sword and starts fighting the attackers. Eventually, the mute loses control and brutally kills one of the tribe members by repeatedly smashing an iron shield into him. Due to the mute's fierce resistance, the surviving UA Morta members begin to retreat. Unfortunately, one of the tribe members manages to steal the cart carrying a golden chest with the holy relic after knocking Kieran unconscious. Seeing this, Deroyd immediately gives chase to the cart, but the mute, still overwhelmed by rage, attacks anyone in his path, including Deroyd. Because of this, Deroyd tries to calm the mute down. After the surprise attack, they manage to fight back and win. The quiet Geraldus and the surviving soldiers decided to get back the sacred object and save Kieran from the UA Mora tribe. Geraldus gave the silent man a sword and asked him to help follow the stolen wagon without delay. The four of them tracked the wagon until the silent man found and killed a UA Mora tribe member. After traveling a long way, they found the UA Mora tribe's village. Seeing how many enemies there were, they hid and waited for nightfall to save Kieran and get back the sacred object. When it was dark, Dermot and the others moved carefully towards where Kieran was tied up. Kieran told them to leave right away because he had thrown the holy stone away before being captured by the UA Mora tribe. Suddenly, they heard someone coming and had to hide again before they could free Kieran. Surprisingly, Raymond and his soldiers arrived to meet with the leader of the UA Mora tribe. It turned out that Raymond and his group had been secretly working with the UA Morta tribe to get their hands on something Geraldus crew had brought. Raymond was after a magical stone, and the tribe wanted a golden box that held it. Unfortunately, the box was empty. Raymond tortured a monk named Kieran to find out where the stone was hidden. Kieran refused to talk. So Raymond brutally killed him. Everyone else was horrified. After things calmed down, Dermot and his friends went back to where the tribe had been to look for the stone. They found it with a torch and quickly grabbed it before Raymond's soldiers could find them. The next day, Dermot's group was feeling hopeless. They thought Raymond would catch up to them and kill them. Suddenly, they heard trumpets from Raymond's army and realized they were trapped. Luckily, they found a thick fog to hide in. When Dermot and his friends reached the bottom of the hill, they found themselves stuck in a big, muddy swamp. They quickly tried to get to the other side to hide from Raymond's soldiers, who had seen them struggling. Raymond kept pushing Geraldus until he was really angry and yelled back. This helped Raymond's men find Geraldus, and they shot arrows at the sound of his voice. Luckily, Geraldus wasn't hit and hid somewhere else. Desperate, Dermot held the special stone and walked into the swamp. Amazingly, they found two people with a boat on the other side. They paid the boatman to take them away. After going down the river, they reached the ocean. But the water was low, so they had to wait until dark to leave. Unfortunately, Raymond's soldiers on horses arrived, forcing them to rush into the ocean in their boat. Geraldus was scared and asked the quiet man to hold off Raymond's army so they could escape with the special object. He promised to help the quiet man forget about all the bad things he did in a past war. The quiet man wanted to be forgiven, so he went to the shore alone to fight Raymond's soldiers. While Geraldus and the others were trying to get away in their boat, Raymond's soldiers shot arrows, killing one of their friends. The quiet man started fighting Raymond's soldiers and quickly won because of his experience in war. When Raymond saw this, he fought the quiet man with a big club. The quiet man was hurt badly, but he also hurt Raymond before they both died. On the boat, Cathal, who had been shot with an arrow, died and fell into the water. Geraldus said the special object was bad because it made people do violent things like the quiet man did. So, he decided to throw the object into the ocean, but he accidentally fell in two and died. The last of their friends asked Dermot where they should go, but he didn't say anything. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon. Take care.